In my last video, video 39, where we built a helix that had multiple entrances and exits, I mentioned that I was using PicoTrack instead of my usual Walther's track because I found what appears to be an error in the Walther's curve turnouts in the AnyRail library. Now obviously there are hundreds if not thousands of track components in the AnyRail libraries and I'm pretty sure that 99.9% .9 of them are very accurate. But I did find this problem and it actually impacted a design that I was working on. Now I'm not going to go over the Pico turnout. We know that it's pretty accurate from using it in our Helix design. But I do want to look at the Walther's turnout. I figure a lot of modelers will be using the Walther's track and I just want to point out what I found. Now, I may be totally wrong about this, so take what I'm going to show you with a grain of salt, or a pinch of salt if you prefer. We're going to look at the Walther's 24 and 28 inch curve turnout. Now, there are two Walther's track libraries in any rail. One is the Walther's Shinohara track library, and this, as far as I can tell, contains older versions of the Walther's track and has some track elements that are not available anymore, and also obsolete part numbers. The other library, called Walther's Code 83, has fewer track components and part numbers that appear to match what is on the Walther's website. But we're going to lose these two libraries because we don't need them for this video. We'll take a look at the turnout specs first. Now I believe that the older Walther's turnout, number 8894, and this newer turnout here, number 94883063 are the same drawing with the same specs. So here are the AnyRail values for the turnout. As you can see, the turnout claims to have an inner radius of 24 inches and an end angle of 310.17 degrees. The outer radius is 28 inches with an end angle of 300.36 degrees. And again, I believe that these are probably compound curves. So let's take a look at the turnout with some curved track added. So I'm going to add a 28 inch radius. Now this track, its endpoint is at the same point as the curve and all of the other pieces of track I add will have the same endpoint right down here. Now you can see that this 28 inch curve pretty much follows the outer curve of our curved turnout. But let's add in the 24 inch radius. And you'll notice that it's way off here. And when we did this on the Pico track, it wasn't like that. It followed a little bit closer. So this doesn't really act like a 24 inch radius curve. I'm not sure about that. I think it's more like a 21 inch radius. Let me add in 21 inch. And you can see it matches a lot closer. Let's take a look at it in the center line just for the heck of it. The red is R21, the yellow is R24, and this orange color here is R28 inch radius. Let me go back to the track outline. And we're going to turn off the 21 inch. Now I can grab this piece of track and I can bring it up and I can rotate it like this and I can get it to match somewhere along the line. but. It's still, when you look at it and you're working with it in a design, it doesn't seem to act like it's a 24 inch radius coming off of here. So is this really something to be concerned about? Well, the next thing I did was I got a template from the Walther's site. And after playing around with a protractor, I got these values over here for the end angles. Now the AnyRail values are in orange, and as you can see, they differ slightly between what AnyRail says and what I measured. Now it's not a big difference, and like I said, I was using a protractor because I couldn't quite figure out any other way to do that. So then I decided to overlay the AnyRail turnout on top of the Walther's template. And one of the things I did was I made sure that this distance here, where it says 14 and 7 eighths on the template, actually matched what I was getting in AnyRail, so I was pretty sure that I had my template the right size. And if you look at it right here, it looks like that AnyRail inner curve is sharper than the Walther's template. The outer curve looks pretty darn good. Let's go up and look at centerline. And you can just see it seems like it's off. Look at that. See how it's closer up here? It looks to me like that is a sharper curve. 
Now, what this curve actually is, I have no idea because I really don't know how to measure that. And we can compare the anti-rail track element to the real thing. I printed the turnout at one-to-one -one scale and then placed the curve turnout on top. And you can see that even though it doesn't look as drastic as the other example, it looks like the radius here is sharper. And of course, the end angle is a little bit different. And sort of just to show that maybe I'm not doing all of this right, I tried again and it came out a little bit different. This time it looked like the outer radius was a little bit off. I also tried prints on the number four right hand and the number six right hand. And as you can see, they look like they've been drawn pretty accurately. Well, what does all this mean? Well, to me, it means I just have to be a little bit more careful when I actually build the layout, but that's something I would do anyway. Now, I had an email exchange with the creator of AnyRail, David Hogvorst, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, David. And I mentioned that it would be nice to be able to edit or create custom track components. David told me why he does not allow users that ability, and I agree with his reasons. Although I did suggest a workaround. So maybe in the future, any rail will have a track component editing feature. So let's take a look at that track plan that completely failed for me. Now, this is the bottom level here, and this is the top level. And as you can see, it's basically a point-to-point -point railroad. Now, I wanted to try and make a helix that would allow trains to enter into the helix from either side. And if it looks a bit confusing here, I erased the helix that was originally on the design. That's why this track comes in and looks like it's going nowhere. It's actually coming in and going to the helix. So let's take a look at that bottom layer. So here's the bottom layer. And as you can see, I had the train coming in this way and entering the helix, or I could have the train come in this way and enter the helix. Now, here's the second level in red. And as you can see, it does not match up with the bottom level of the helix. Now, here's the third level of the helix, and it actually matches up with my second level. So we're okay there. Now we get to the top layer of the railroad. And as you can see, the top level of the helix kind of follows the other two levels. But in order to get this to work, my track radius varies from my 24 inch minimum down to 22 inches. And I think in some place it actually went a little bit smaller than that. And the whole thing just starts to look like a nightmare to build and maintain. I also think that this curved turnout here, because of the error, if it actually exists, also contributed to my not liking the way the helix was coming out. So I can sign this design to the scrap heap, or it could just be I didn't do a very good job on the design. I mean, I'm new to designing helixes and, you know, first attempts are probably going to fail miserably. But all in all, I really don't think this is going to work out just because I think it would be too difficult to build this helix. But doing a design like this, this is one of the reasons that you use a CAD program for your railroad. It gave me a chance to try something new and easily spot errors in both my design and my assumptions on what I could and could not do in the space I had. So, does this error affect what you want to do? Well, I don't know. I only bring it up to point out that maybe the AnyRail track components could have errors in them, and maybe you should check a full-scale print of the turnout crossing or whatever before you start building. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to show you the changes that I've made for my railroad, and then in the videos after that, I'm going to show you how to make your designs really stand out. And that should be a lot of fun. We'll see you then.